Hello, this is uh, Peter Molyneux, and this is Fable 6. No, just joking. Uh, this is uh, Tim, Tim Shiman, the uh, developer of uh, The Deadly Path. And I'm going to be playing a little bit of this game for you and telling you all about it. Um, I'm not very good at this game, and I will almost certainly die horribly, but that's the point. That's what we're here to do in this game. This game of life and death and feeding rodents. So, I'm going to select a new game. This is the Mother of Tears here, the one who rusts, Royan. Good people, good people. Now, there's lots of gods, as you can see, and you'll be encountering them all on the journey, but just for the moment, I'm going to pick Royan, Royan the Blightcaster. He from all manner of pestilence is born. Anyway, so Ryan's a friendly enough guy, and we're going to be playing on medium difficulty. And I'll roughly explain to you how this game works, but it's extremely simple. Basically, all you have to do is not die. And if you can not die for long enough, then you win. However, it's not quite as simple as that. So, the Age of Darkness. Welcome to the Age of Darkness. We were already there. Okay, so here's how it works. Uh, in the center, you have the throne room. The throne room is the most important building. Uh, if something happens to it, you're in trouble. And you see there's uh, two numbers. One is 66, that's how many cycles we have left. And then the 32 is counting down the cycle. And when it gets to the end of the cycle, certain things happen. But the most important is that upkeep is incurred. You see these numbers up here? This is meat, this is gold, and when upkeep is incurred, this number gets taken away from that number. And if you run out, you die! It's like stat clans, isn't it? This game came about from playing a lot of stat clans, as well as a lot of uh, games like Cultist Simulator, uh, Dome Keeper, and other mega earners, uh, which was very different to the sort of games that I was making at the time, which were largely narrative and played mostly by my parents. Um, you also have the barracks, which is producing new servants. That's these uh, happy little fellas down here and you can use them in all sorts of ways. So let's get started. We're going to start by excavating a bit, zoom out, take a look at our kingdom, and we can see we have a number of resources here. And we're going to need quite a lot of meat, a bit of gold, and definitely a lot of bone. So, let's start with a bit of meat, click on here, build a slaughterhouse. Now, once you have a slaughterhouse, you can staff the slaughterhouse. A couple of my fellas in there, and let's do... The scavenger hut. I'm going to get bones out of the scavenger hut. There we go. Now, there's not a ton to do but wait. So, um, what we're going to do is going to excavate a little bit more, but not too much. Otherwise, we'll incur upkeep issues. So, whilst this is happening, we can see that we're going to get another skeleton. And that's going to drop in there. So, yeah, uh, this game employs a lot of things that you might have seen in uh, Cultist Simulator. Obviously, it's got its little timers as well. And it's a bit like stack length in the sense that you're moving cards around to make a village, but it's a little bit different as well. In order to win this game, you have to build the Dark Factory, build the Temple of Sin, the Beacon of Deliverance, and survive the Killing Moon. The Killing Moon is what happens when you uh, build all the other three, and then you have to survive about five minutes of constant attacks, which we'll get to in a second. Um, the way that you build these buildings is you go here, and these will take you up an era into the uh, era age of industry, the age of ritual, and the age of deliverance. So, where are my skellies? Let's see, we do want to get some gold going in a minute, but we don't really have a lot of stuff to do, so let's just speed this up a tiny bit. <coughs> Excuse me. And let's skip on a little bit. So, when can we build this? We need 80. So that should be coming in any second soon. You can see we're starting to deplete a little bit. And I think we're ready to build a smelter. Good for the gold. Good for the gold. Now you can see that some of these actually incur their own upkeep. Right? Which the barracks produces one, this produces three. And if things start to get a bit close, you're going to hear a ticking. So if you hear a ticking, you tell me. Now, you can get lots of upgrades in this game. These sorts of things up here. But the way they work is that you have to build a certain building. Sharpening stone, extremely helpful finger post, pure as gold, requires the foundry, etc. And those are all things that you'll come to later in this wonderful journey down this uh, strange route we're taking. So, um, we have a bit of everything going on, but I think we're going to need a bit more bone. So let's go over here, let's go over here. And dig this out. There we go. Ryan's a friendly bloke and he's not too hard on us. Yeah. 
Um, before this, I was making narrative games. I made a game called Riley and Rochelle, which was about uh, what would happen if Elliot Smith and Celine Dion fell in love at the Oscars. It was uh, critically mauled, actually, which is not what I was expecting. I was just expecting it not to sell, but actually it didn't do too well with the press either. It put me on a difficult and dangerous path, which leads us to here, my friend. But enough about me. How are you today? Right, let's see what's going on. So, the numbers are looking pretty good, but we're going nowhere slowly. We really need to start scaling a bit, which means we're going to definitely need to start getting some better units together, okay? So, in order to do that, we really want to start building something we can train in. Let's see what we've got. That's the blood you... Ah, right. So, we've opened an entrance. An entrance uh, leads raiders towards your throne room. And so what we need to do is build a dungeon, and that has power three, this has power two, so that should see it off fairly easily. Uh, I can also put skeletons into there, but I'm going to resist doing so right now. And then let's start thinking about actually building some better units. So we're running a little bit low, we need some more meat. And also you can see that we're overpopulated, so we need to build a hovel here and that will solve our population problem. Right, things are getting a little tight on the gold front. I'm starting to feel like we might need a bit more in the smelter, so let's dip these two in here. Watch for that raid coming through. This is a special tile here, hence the green fog. Let's see what it is. The Misted Cove. You can build lots of cool things here. Laboratory, this uh, manufactures skeletons. Um, I thought it manufactured zombies, but I was wrong. There we go, shifting halls. And then there's better forms of dungeons as well. So let's see, what are we going to do? We've got this raid coming through in a second. And let's do a little bit more excavating. And I think what we're going to want to do is build another hovel just while we're waiting. Let's see where we're going. Now this bones is getting very, very low. That's very worrying indeed. So let's think about getting a scavenger hut down and getting Skelly here. So there's always lots of decisions to be made. Some a little uh, uh, terrifying, some a little bland, uh, and most of some are in the middle. So let's see what we've got. All right, nice. So things are going pretty well. In about five seconds, we're gonna have a fight. So let's see what happens here. Ready, go. Raid has begun. Victory, and this actually will um, actually start restoring health, so it goes actually gets back to uh, three at that point. So there's not much more we can do there, but we have just run out. So that slaughterhouse is depleted, so we need to get more meat from somewhere. So let's get a slaughterhouse going here. I'm a bit worried about my meat supply, but yeah, it seems okay. And let's also just shoot for a bit more bone, I think. So we need to start thinking about actually building this dark factory. Dark Factory requires 100 bone and 50 gold. We're doing pretty well on that. It's going to take a moment. So let's see how we're doing. Got another raid coming through there. We will see them off and won't get defeated. I'm a bit worried about this gold uptick, which is happening. And also you can see an orange thing that this is in a bit of a risky state. So we do need more meat coming through. Let's see, what have we got? There we go. And this is the problem, you know, you're shooting for something and then you have to kind of keep building and keep building as well. But there we go, let's drop them in there. Waiting for that raid to start. Can't unlock that yet. Let's see. I think we can spend these fairly safely. One step forward, two steps back. Very much the way with the deadly path. Let's see. Abattoir reduces slaughterhouse risk. Okay. Smelter is now done. That is cooked. We're going to need to get some more gold from somewhere. Oh, that's going to cost me a lot of bone. All right, here we go. Get that down. Get these fellas into the smelter. Here's a raid. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right. All right. So, Spirit Void. We need to really start training some units, otherwise this isn't going to work out very well for us. Let's build a scrapper's nest so we can build some rats. The way that you train is like this, you drop something in, it sacrifices the creature, it spends a bit of money, and you get a rat. And rats um, are good at scavenger bone, which means that we possibly 
want to actually take this beastie out and put that one in, and that actually increases what we can do. In fact, I'm actually going to sacrifice all of these since we've got enough bone going on here. Now, you can see from this red thing that next turn is a Blood Moon coming up. Blood Moons greatly increase the amount of upkeep, which is... Oh, didn't mean to do that. Which is horrifying. And you'll see exactly what I mean now. Also, I should note that the Blood Moon is currently playing the wrong sound and it should have some drumming sounds. I'm not quite sure why it's doing that, um, but <laughs> there's nothing I can do right now. I'll have to just debug it when you're not around. Let's see, here we go. Leaving that there, moving that here. And so we're getting quite a lot of bones, so now we're actually starting to scale up our economy a little bit. I'm very worried about this meat. This is going to uh, require quite a bit of help, so let's just start taking this out and thinking about this here, putting in a slaughterhouse. Luckily, we're going to get some nice stuff back soon. Oh, and there's the raid, and that's very lucky, because I would have missed that otherwise. That's level five, so we're going to need some creatures to go in there soon. So let's wait for the barracks to um, done. So that was a blood moon. Survived a blood moon. Very nice. Let's have a think. We need this to upgrade. Uh, so it goes like that. And let's see. So, graveyard, earth rage. What is earth rage? Build foundries, forge a little bit of gold. God, you sacrifice servants, chamber of commerce. Yeah. All right. Let's take a moment to build a hovel. And we're actually getting very good bone production. In fact, we're getting such good bone production, we kind of want to parley it into something else. Let's see. Dungeon traps, almost cunning raiders. Kind of want something which trades into gold. I'm not sure if we can actually get it right now. Let's see. Let's say that build knowledge. Map room, dungeons, shifting comps. Okay. Nothing yet. Let's see what we've got here. Okay, so what are we short? So we're actually pretty good, so I think it's about time for us to go up an age. Alright, here we go. Age of Industry! We are on. Nice. So, victory condition achieved. We've done one of our victory conditions, so we just need to keep going. Alright, the next one, the Beacon of Deliverance, is not the one we want. Temple of Sin. Ah! We need knowledge, and we also need blood. Blood is going up slowly, you can see it up here. Because of the raids, uh, the more raids we are running, the better we will do. But we need knowledge. Now, I think knowledge is produced by the Oracle, which I need 50 gold for. But this is going to be problematic. Let's see if we can get a bit more gold by building a smelter here. And let's stick a... Ah, the rats have come back, which is bad. Uh, I think our bone production is about to dive, but it's not looking too bad, so we're going to keep it going as it is. Here comes the raid. Nice. I like it. So how are we doing there? That's coming up, so that's at three, and hopefully we need to stick a skelly in there. Smelter's been depleted. We do need more gold. Right. These are covenants. A covenant is um, you can subscribe to a god, and if you can build all of their buildings, then you'll get a reward. We're not going to do that right now, because... <laughs> let's see, statue. It gives its own benefit. Skeletons gain a level 1 specialism. That's quite good, actually. Arch, sign, sell a little knowledge for a ton of gold. Mm, so we could, that's the way we could get gold, but I don't really want that. What I want is to build an oracle here with that 50 gold. So let's just see if we can produce it and not die in the process, right? So that's that 11's going to come off soon. So we need to think about how to build this without dying. So, here comes that. Can I sign any more gold? So we're in a pretty nice place. Let's see. Okay, if I do this, will I have enough gold on the other side? I'm going to take the risk. I'm going to take the risk. So here comes the smelter. Nine. Yes. Okay, we're going good. Now, that will produce knowledge. I just need to assign something to it. And uh, do I have any creatures? Here comes my barracks. I wonder if I can just 
pull you out just because I want to get on with this. All right, there we go. Oh my God, it's slow. Oh, it's so slow. Oh, it's just terrible. Let's fill out here. Here comes an attack. I think we've got enough support to be able to deal with that though. Let's have a thing. So uh, dungeons heal up to their natural level, which would be their starting level, but they won't heal beyond that. So you kind of need to put stuff in there. Let's see, how are we doing? A lot of bone here, like that. I'm actually gonna build a hovel. All right, very good. Let's keep going. So that is producing knowledge exceptionally slowly. I really want to build a new scavenger's hut, but I really want to also think about building that statue. That requires two knowledge, which is a lot. It's a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, so, let's get some bone going on. Right, there we go. Alright, here we are. And you see, the problem is I'm running out of time. At the end of the day, I'm stuck in the first era, and I'm kind of running out of time. So I need a bit of strategy to get me here. Temple Sin, extract the early tombs. It's going to take a little while. So I can now dig out here, and I'm doing pretty comfortably. <coughs> because of them rats. But I need more. I need more. Map room. Right there. Increases the starting power of all dungeons by two, which is good. This is another grave. This is Grave of Qualman, Statue of Qualman. Gain two death eye pangolin. Oh, I really want pangolin. Three life blood at the end of every blood moon. That doesn't seem that great to me. Let's see. So we've got that. We've got this and that. I really need to get this dude in somewhere. There we are. This is a big attack coming. Oh, I'm a bit under level. Quickly, let's get this in here. All right. Yeah, very concerning. Um, and let's get another rat out of this. Okay. Forgotten City. What does Forgotten City do? This is an Explorer Station. So an Explorer Station, you can put something into and it will come back and give you a certain amount of treasure. Let's drop you into there. And when it comes back, it will give you treasure and it will actually give you a unit as well. So... So, that's the Deadly Path. Um, uh, thank you very much to London Games Festival for having us. I hope you're getting a lot of it out of it. And, um, uh, yeah, I hope you have a great time.